Hey guys, how are you going? So today is actually going to be quite a big day. I have a massage this morning and then we're going into the city to see an orthotist who I am going to hopefully get some help with um, fitting my neck braces. So I've tried a couple of neck braces from Aspen and they're just not supportive enough so it's actually causing me more pain having them on than not having them on. Um, so hopefully we'll sort that out and we'll get something that works for me. And then we are going to see an eye doctor to get my eye pressure tested to um, investigate intracranial hypertension which is a build up of pressure around the brain and to see whether or not that's the case. Um, I've had really bad pressure headaches every day all the time um, for the last six years, possibly even for the last ten years and they've kind of got their baseline and then they get worse and so when they're worse it's absolutely horrendous and so the funny thing is that for the first time in six years I've actually had some relief from them in the last week because we I've seen a new chiropractor and we did some different things and it's actually helped relieve them. My symptoms aren't gone but they're not like this crazy unbearable thing all the time so it's kind of funny because that seems to happen when you're getting a test done and you know I've had practitioners before that have said get the test done when you feel your worst so that we can see fully what's going on because if you've been treated really well we can't always see what's going on and that doesn't mean that the problem's gone or that it's not going to affect you or flare up again it just means that at that point in time it may not show up on the test and so that can be really annoying, but we're just going to go today anyway, and we're going to see what happens. Um, I'm really not feeling great this morning. I have rested up for the last four days to prepare for this, um, but I'm still really not feeling great. Um, and it's kind of funny. I think that that happens in life for anybody in any situation is you can prepare as much as you want, but you can't control everything. So... It's fine, I'm just going to get it done and I'm actually feeling very grateful because, you know, when I was at my worst for all those years, I wouldn't have been able to do the amount of stuff that I'm doing today on my best day. Like, I would have had to um, split these three appointments apart on different days, at least a week between each and probably a month between the orthotist and the eye appointment because I just couldn't get out the house any more than that and if I was having a less than ideal day today like today I just wouldn't have been able to get up at all I just physically you know my heart rate would have been too high blood pressure too low wouldn't have physically been able to go so I'm really grateful that I'm in a season that even though I'm feeling less than ideal I am able to still do the best I can with what I have where I'm at and still able to get this done and we're just going to get it done today. Um, I've been debating taking some supplements that help my mitochondria and so give me a bit more energy and more clarity of thought and less shakiness and all that sort of stuff um, help me not be so weak but I've had trouble tolerating them so I think I'm going to decide not to because I don't want to risk having to leave like having to not be able to leave the bathroom for having a reaction um, and therefore having to rebook my appointments because I just want to get them done and I need to get this eye test done before I see the brain and spine specialist anyway um, and with COVID on if you're having any sort of symptoms they're not going to let you in so um, yeah so today I'm wearing my let's do this top from the Fry Life and so we're just going to get it done and we're going to do it. And Simeon is literally going to spend his whole day today driving me around to appointments because we've got a fair drive because we have to go into the city for this. So I'm really appreciative of him. And I'll take you guys along with me. Hey, Pooty. Pooty Poo. Hello. Are you going to take off your coat? Are you going to take off your coat? Come on, take off your coat. Come here. Take this off. You'll be a good boy and I'll see you when I get home, okay? Be a good boy. Good boy. I'll be back soon, alright? Be a good boy. Good boy. Does my good boy. Does my good boy. Bye bye. 
so we finished at the massage and we've been in the car for a while and we've arrived at the orthocyst um prosthesis i can't say it um and i am feeling quite sick after the drive it's a really um it's a really fine line between sipping enough of my formula to sustain sustain my energy so I don't get too shaky and my blood sugar doesn't drop too low and not drinking too much that I don't get debilitatingly sick. So um, that's a fine balance. But the good thing about like it's okay that I'm not feeling the best because I know that this is something that can potentially help me in the future and I'm just really grateful that I am now getting a team who can help me progress and maintain and that yeah I'm just feeling really grateful so let's go hey guys how you going so I didn't finish the vlog it's two days later and I didn't finish the vlog because I got really sick um so we didn't vlog in the orthotist appointment where they fit me for my neck brace because um it was a really small room and we didn't really have anywhere to put the camera and we still feel pretty awkward about asking can we film you like can we film this it's just weird um but also like it takes a lot we've never seen an orthotist before we've never done this before it was a new place and it just it takes a lot of capacity to do these things and to figure them out for yourself without having to worry about filming so the appointment went really well and we were there for two hours um not by any fault of their own they were running on time and everything but because that's how long it took to find a neck brace that would fit me so um this is a miami j and it's one of the older models so the new miami j model is kind of like the aspen vista where it's like one size fits all and so it has more of an adjustable neck um and so when we went in there I had my two Aspen Vista collars that I have tried, the Aspen Vista and the Aspen multi polished therapy collar. And when I had I had got them on the suggestion of my uh, physiotherapist and they were very, very big. So I got the orthotist to try them and he was like, yeah, you're absolutely swimming in them. Like they're as tight as they can possibly be and they're still just way too big. So, um, we tried the Miami J collar that's similar to like that, it's the one size fits all and it was kind of the same situation. So then we started on these older models and they've got the two pieces, like the front piece and the back piece are two different pieces that fit together and um, I'll show you at the end and um, and we just had to try so many different types because my neck is long but it's like really really narrow and so we had to like do the braces up so tight that my cheeks were like spilling over the edge but like they still weren't fitting properly if that makes sense um and so a pediatric collar would have been ideal but my neck is actually quite long so this chin part wouldn't have been high enough and with these older ones you can adjust the chin but only a little bit and the same with the back piece you can adjust it only a little bit and so we ended up going with a regular front and an extra small back so like we mixed and matched um different pieces from different colors to make it fit um but yeah, it took two hours to find the right fit and then they did a couple of, um, they customised it a little bit to make it fit me better. And he had to like bring in the manager who had more experience and I felt so bad because we were just taking so much time and he had to put on so many different collars. But one of the things, one of the issues I had with the bigger collars and the Aspen Vista was it was so hard for me to put on and especially my in both my arms but especially my right I had a lot of issues with my joints 
in my shoulders and elbows and especially my thumb like with the the spinny thing here um trying to get it on and just like pushing it because it was so tight and it took, has taken me weeks to recover from that just from trying it on a few times and even the orthotist was like I'm having to exert a lot of force to get these on you because they're just so big and we have to like bend the plastic so much to get them on and um so even Simeon was like I don't think you're going to be able to get those on so we ended up um going with this one and it's still hard to get on but because it's a much better fit it's much more manageable for me and I'll show you what I mean by that a bit later and then after that I think I had vlogged that I was starting to feel sick before that but after that I tried to have a couple of sips of formula and then I got started getting really sick like really nauseous very dizzy very weak and unstable on my feet and so I kind of just got through it. I was like, we'll just do this optometrist appointment and we'll get through it. And then, you know, it'll be all done. And then so we went to the optometrist and she was really nice and she was really good. And she tested my eye pressure and my eye pressure is actually okay. And then she did like a 2D scan on my eye and saw that there were some indications of swelling in the optic nerve. And then so she did a 3D scan of my eye and saw that there was swelling in my optic nerves. And so she said that it is definitely those indicators indicators make those are indicators that it is definitely worthwhile looking into and pursuing investigating intracranial hypertension more to hopefully rule it out. She said it doesn't mean that I have it. Like this could just be how it is, but the swelling, this could just be, you know, how I am, but the swelling definitely indicates that it'd be worth investigating. But in, to test for intracranial hypertension is quite invasive, like it involves the spinal tap. So if any of you have had experience with that and you have any advice for me, please, please let me know. I'm going to just, um, I asked her to send me a copy of the... Uh, 3D scan and her report and I'm going to give it to the brain and spine specialist when I see him in a few weeks um, just to see if he says if he thinks it's worthwhile for me to take the risks of the invasive procedure um, if he thinks it's worthwhile to test for that um, because of you know the pressure headaches I've been having for the last six years and yeah, then after that I was really sick, but even though I was sick, um, and also in the optometrist chair, even though I tried to have the best position I possibly could, I really messed up my lower back. Um, I don't know what I did, but the pain afterwards was like almost unbearable. It was really bad. So I had a Cairo yesterday. Because I was up all night that night. I had a chiropractor appointment yesterday to get it fixed up. And it reduced the pain enough to sleep. So I slept most of yesterday. Which I'm very grateful for. Those of us with EDS really appreciate when we can sleep. He said that the pain that I was pointing to was right on my scoliosis. So I suppose there was just too much pressure on it. The chair had just put too much pressure on it. Um, but... Yeah, even though I got quite sick and it was a very hard day, very tiring and I've needed to recover from it, I'm still really grateful for how far I've come and like I still see that as a successful day and it still is encouraging to see how far I've come that I was able to do three appointments in the one day. Like that was just unheard of a few years ago. Um, I couldn't even do them in the same week. So I'm just so grateful for that and I'm also so grateful that I'm in Australia and I'm in a country where it's safe enough for me to go to my appointments with the COVID situation. However, yesterday I was feeling very discouraged. Like I've been feeling discouraged lately even though getting answers is good. The answers I'm getting, um, you know, 
permanent incurable complex diseases and conditions that are really affect the whole body and I was being feeling very overwhelmed about how you know my body is so fragile and it's literally falling apart and that even going going doing something like just getting my eyes checked um, requires me to have to go and get therapy to um, to recover from that and how I have to spend days recovering and how <clears throat> my joint my joint and muscle pain really stops me from being able to be the person that I used to be and do the things I love and spend time with the people that I love and um, <clears throat> and so I was really discouraged with that so I've been wearing this shirt um, from the Fry Life that says my body may be broken but my smile always works and it just reminds me that even though I can't be me in the same way that I used to before I got really sick I can't be the same outgoing bubbly adventurous me I can still be the me that is very kind and caring and cares about people and wants to help people and even though I can just do it in a small capacity I can still you know help and encourage others by sharing my story and just by you know, extending kindness to those that I come across, even though I don't come across people very often, even if it's just a smile. So, I just, I just always smile at people. I love it. And even though I'm sick, that's something I can still do. And I can still try and make people's day just by smiling at them. So I've been encouraged by that and I wanted to share it with you. Um, I'm sorry this wasn't a very interesting vlog, but... It's just the reality of chronic illness and I hope that you found it helpful or encouraging or insightful in some way. And if you did, please let me know in the comments. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it and please consider to subscribing to help me out and to help spread the awareness of my story to help other people. See you later. Okay, so just so you, if you're interested to see, this is how it comes off just take off one side and so this is attached here and these are the two pieces I was talking about so this is the front piece and this is the back piece it kind of looks like a stormtroopers thing <laughs> um, and this is how I get it back on oh and what I was talking about before is that it can be adjustable a lot of it through these so this is how I put it on squish this around push it in and voila and that is how we do it